Yeah, you're welcome back. We want to look today at the role uh, of strategy and information systems, how they align together in a business. Information systems and strategy, how they align together in a business. And we will be starting with a foremost leader of management and strategy, Michael Porter. We'll look at his five forces of competition and his thoughts on what could make an organization to have competitive advantage. We've got several scholars who have pointed at several things that could make an organization to have a competitive advantage. Some of those things are generic, meaning that it can work in any industry, in any size of company. While some are specific, by virtue of the size of the industry, by virtue of the legal and regulatory framework within that environment, and by virtue of the nature of the people within that domain. But for today, we'll be starting with Porter's five competitive forces that shape industry competition. The essence of all this is to look at the proper application of IT tools and strategy in ensuring delivery, performance, competitiveness, optimally in a business. Now, let's look at it from Porter's point of view. Porter's define competitive forces from five point of view. That what are the things that shape competition in an industry? In an industry that is open, that is not uh, closed to very few people, is not monopolistic in nature. The first of Potter's view is threat of new entrants. And that threat of new entrants, we can't afford to joke with it. Why can't we joke with it? Because it is very, very interesting that these days you see someone from nowhere just coming, introduce a new product, and before you know it, people are buying into it. And the old players in that industry will be thinking, what does this person or this company know that we don't know? What are they doing that we don't know? Because the customers that have been with us for five years, 10 years, are now rushing to patronize them. So one of the forces that shape competition in any industry is threat of new entrants. And in the last 10 years, to be modest, technology has played a very strong part in that, especially with destructive technologies. Sometimes changes are gradual, gradual and incremental. You could, you could, you could project. You could think, you could ask questions, you could do some survey and say this might likely happen. But again, some people have looked at the power of quietness, deep understanding of technology, understanding customer needs, survey of existing service providers, what they do right and what they do wrong, vis-a-vis -vis what they think should be done. And they've come up with products and services that can not be less defined as being destructive. And for the fact that it's destructive, it has created new markets that's changed the way the game is being played. So up from that, one of the things that Porter 
Michael Porter advocated is power of bias. Yes, the power of bias. The truth of the matter is in my country where I live, Nigeria, I have seen new companies do things that companies that are 20 years old dare not try. And if they do, it will affect their P and L, affect their strengths, and sometimes will even threaten their existence. Now, bias sources of income has also changed. Their taste has changed. Because buyer's power is not just about their financial capacity. It's also about their change in taste and thinking and where they choose to spend their hard and income. And this force is also a major force that shape competitiveness in any industry. Another one apart from the first two that we mentioned, is threat of substitute products. It is, it is interesting that some of the things we learned in economics are true. Why changes in technology is redefining some of them. It is no news, again, that online uh, medium of trainings and meetings, the like of uh, Zoom, the like of uh, Google Meet, and the rest are now big competitors to airline operators. Not just people that they are in the same industry, not even the road, the rail, or the water transport system, but a technology that makes people to travel less and achieve the same result or even more. To try it on substitute products is also another factor that Michael Porter see as a major force in driving competition in any industry. Outside that is the power supplier. Is the power supplier. Understanding the fact that Every business is a loop. You take from some people, you do some work on it, and you also give to some people. So your competitiveness is affected both by the people you take from, in this case, your supplier, and the people you give to, your buyer. So the power of supplier, the thinking of supplier, the request by other users to the suppliers outside you, shapes your position in the industry, your productivity, and even your sustainability and existence as a business. And the last, according to Michael Porter, we will have some time to look at what other scholars, practitioners, and consultants see as factors that drive competition other than what Porter has said. But for this purpose, we're focusing on Michael Potter five forces that shape competition. And the last is rivalry among competitors. That seems to be in the center, but the way it is, it is probably the least from my own view, because any competitor that would do anything differently must look are things that are not usual within that industry. And I can tell you, in getting that thing that is not usual, technology play a very key role. So in determining business strategy, being conscious of the fact that there are different types of strategy in the business, short term, medium term, long term, Strategy at operational level, strategy at middle level, strategy at top level, strategic. 
thinking about the industry, thinking about the customers, thinking about the product, thinking about things that will happen. So in planning all of this, including operations, technology play an important role. Every business leader must think of what is the maximum lifespan of the product that brings us money now? What are the likely substitutes, both vertically and horizontally? And what do we need to do to reposition ourselves such that our business is continually in existence, such that we keep our customers and earn more? So research, deep research into dynamics that is evolving in the industry is a critical role for any board and any entrepreneur or CEO because what was it yesterday might not be it when you wake up. And for your business to keep existing, you must be conscious of all these forces that helps or that aids competition and know the things you need to do. And in knowing the things you need to do, you must be very uh, sincere with yourself in identifying your strengths and your weaknesses. You must do a strong SWOT analysis, including your opportunities and your threats. Every organization is exposed to that. We've seen organizations with good products that are not existing again today. There are giants of yesteryears that are today are either sleeping or dead. All these are the results of the ability of the leadership of the organization to see what is happening now. Having a deep backward thinking first of where they're coming from and what will likely happen in the future and with technology as a first line of factor in the bid to either change or adjust the strategy to fit the discovery for existence and uh, sustenance. Having looked at Porter's five forces of competition, uh, this book by a woman, Introduction to Information Systems, a scholar, identify what you are seeing as some of the destructive innovation that have shaped the industry in a while. But again, this is less than 1% of those destructive uh, uh, innovation. And let me say this, technology alone is not what changes an industry, but it is major. Sometimes it could be strategy, sometimes it could be human relation, sometimes it could be structure, Sometimes it's a competition system, a whole lot of factors. But again, technology has come so strong almost across all sectors. And that is why uh, our session today is placing that much importance on the fact, I mean, the importance of technology and what technology does to either aid the existence or extinction of an organization or its products and services. You could see the kind of uh, destructive innovations and the uh, mindset and lifestyle we have. Google, with Amazon, with Facebook, with FinTech. People that ordinarily will not want to put their money where they're not sure. They now trust mobile banking apps to keep their money even in a bank that has no branch, because almost all they expected from conventional banks are being met and surpassed. And that on its own has reinforced the trust that was once their major fear. You can see technology is picking it from what was their number one fear. And from there, it can drill down. So another thing is, legal and regulatory framework, yes. But again, every legislature, every law-making organizations must be deep in their thoughts 
first in review of existing law vis-a-vis -vis current realities and in creating other laws because some laws can just be as old as those who are making them, if at all they are old, because the new normal will be conscious of not only what is feasible, but what could be possible. Artificial intelligence has created a whole lot of disruptions and that is penetrating into almost all industries. Scholars, practitioners are burning midnight candles to see how to deliver values with less stress from demand pain. And every business must think in this direction. What used to be an organogram in those days have changed. That's changed. So in every strategic meeting, in every operational meeting, businesses should not only be concerned about how to smoothen what they do, that is more or less like they are normal, they are comfort zone, but there should be a think tank looking at how sustainable and realistic is the lifespan of what we are doing now. Will it still bring us the same result in the next six months, one year, two years? And do a sniffing into other industries, especially startups, and see what are the things they are doing differently that could change the entire face of the industry. Right from the thinking of supplier, of buyer, internal value chain, the way the system is operated, relationship with staff and things like that. And finally, on this note, when all those things are being done, they should be considered within ethics, such that rights of individuals are not trampled upon and it is done with the deep knowledge and understanding. So, in deciding strategy, you must be conscious of all this. The same way you buy yesterday might not be the same way you buy today. The same way you sell yesterday might not be the same way you sell today. The successes of yesterday might be an hindrance for tomorrow. If we don't think differently, let's ask questions. Let's go online. Let's read books. Let's think deep. When you hear something new, take time to ask. Take time to research into what is this thing that is new. If you behave as if that thing does not exist, that might be the thing that will take away that business that you value so much. And what is that business? Your customer, sales, patronage. I'll be back next time. Thank you.